you hear all the hype about DIY investing, AKA couch potato investing, and you throw all your money into the stock market because you believe this is your path to financial freedom. But you would be foolish to do this, and I'll explain why after my bi-weekly update where we take a deep dive into my portfolio. Hey, I'm Darren, and this is the Crazy Canuck Investor, a beginner investor channel designed to share my investing journey and all the lessons that I learned along the way. This week, I made several changes to my account, so let's jump right into things. My Well Simple Trade account is down to $127,022. That's right, I said down, but it's not all doom and gloom because I was ready for this. My cash account is down to $37,000. $871. That's right, it's down $3,000 from my last update. But more about that in a bit. Our kids' RESP is up to $56,149. It's a well simple robo advisor account. We made a regular $200 contribution to it this week, and in addition, we had $406.93 in dividends. And all of that was reinvested back into our account via the robo advisor. My RRSP is up to $15,693. Now, that's Canadian and US funds, two separate accounts. And across all of my accounts, I've held VDY and XEI. And both of these ETFs track the same Canadian companies. And after doing a little bit of analysis and digging, I figured out that I was way too heavy weighted into Canadian stocks. And therefore, I made the decision to hold one of these ETFs, and that was XEI. So in this week's trades, I ended up selling all of my position in VDY. So that was a total of 65 shares in my RRSP, and it gave me about $2,800 to trade with. With that $2,800, I bought 15 shares of XIC, 50 shares of XEI, two shares of Canadian National Railway, and three shares of the REIT ETF VRE. The remaining funds, about $600 Canadian, I converted into US funds, which gave me about 442 US. With the 442 US, I bought one share of VOO, and left over in that account, I had a little bit more money, about $42 in US funds, so I made a fractional purchase of VOO. Now, if you're new to investing with Wealthsimple, when you convert funds from Canadian to US, they charge you a 1.5% conversion fee. And after I made this trade, I learned that I could actually make the same conversion with no fees. And I'll talk about that in a later video. My TFSA is up to $17,177. Following up on my plan from my last video, I sold my Enbridge shares. I waited until it come, came up above the share price that I was holding, about $6, and I sold all nine of my shares, which was about $445. In addition to that, following through on the plan that I did in my RRSP, I sold off all my VDY shares. Selling those shares off gave me about $2,900. So when you add in the extra money that was in the account, about $550, we had somewhere around $3,500 to trade with. And here's how I made those trades this week. I bought 17 shares of VFV, 34 shares of XEI, and finally with the little bit of money that was left over, I bought 1.6 shares of QQC. Now I told you that I would tell you why it's not a good idea to put all your money into the stock market right off the bat. I definitely made this mistake when I started off and if we go back you can see in this graph here where there was a small dip where I pulled some money out. So I initially took a whole bunch of money, put it into my TFSA and realized wait a minute you need to have a savings account and you need to have an emergency fund. So I set aside a bunch of money and started building up the emergency fund. Of course, it's Christmas time and we had a number of bills that came up and so that's why you saw my cash account drop down when I said it was down about $3,000. Now these are not emergent things, they are things that I definitely planned for which is why I had money in those accounts. However, I share my entire portfolio with you so it looks like my account went down. But if you look at my TFSA, 
it continues to grow because I continue to have set amount of money that I invest in there every two weeks. Any investment strategy involves having an emergency fund. That emergency fund will help with all those things that come up that you may not plan for, such as you lose your job or you have some major house repairs that need to be done. Things that are emergent and you can't plan for. In my case, I have my savings and my emergency fund built into one because when you invest $100,000 with Wealthsimple, they give you an interest rate of 4.5%. That's the cash account that I showed you at the beginning of this update. If you were to set aside about $5 a week, you'd have about $260 at the end of the year. If you were to set aside $20 a week, you would have $1,040. Now, if you put it into a high interest savings account, you can start to earn interest on top of interest each month. That's called the compounding effect. Some important considerations when you're setting up your emergency fund is to make sure that it's separate from all your other banking, that there's no fees when you withdraw money from the account, that it's actually earning some interest for you, and that it's liquid and available to you whenever you need it. It's also really important to help your money compound to have good habits. Habit number one would be instead of buying your lunch when you go out to work, bring your lunch with you. Instead of buying a coffee at work, say at Starbucks, that might cost you five or six dollars, bring your own coffee and make it at work. Instead of using your car to go back and forth to work, maybe use public transit or ride a bike. So one of three important steps before you get started investing is to have an emergency fund set up so you don't have that big reality check when you realize that all your money is tied up in the stock market and you can't get your hands on it. If you want to learn more about those three steps, you can watch this video here.